All right, so what we did last time was we used red, blue, and yellow, our primary colors, and first we blew them on the wings in the direction of the feathers, and then we did the tails the same way, and then we painted in the bodies by just putting uh, water inside, water inside, and then whatever colors you want to do, I mean, that's complete and utter freedom on that. Um, I put a color into the wet area and then uh, another color in and let them kind of run together. Maybe a third color in. I have all three colors represented here. Kind of orangey here for my red and yellow. And then I ran some blue in, I do believe from the belly side, and it kind of ran in. And then it hits the yellow and it turns green. And then it, when it hits all three of them, it turns a little neutral. Um, and I did similar over here, only here I used red on the belly instead, but I did start out here with the, the yellow. I, it's just, I try to avoid having a, I don't want it, really want it to be like super striped, like with the hard lines. I don't mind, I mean, it's kind of stripey still, but it's soft, it's running into each other. So that's what I was kind of after. And then, did I do the feet here for you too? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is just orange, which I mixed from my red and my yellow, and then I ran a little bit of blue into it. And uh, since orange and blue are complementary colors on the color wheel, you know complementary colors, if you mix them together, they neutralize each other. So it got kind of like a beigey color there for the feet. And I have another set of feet, so I can do another foot for you. Uh, and then we're gonna do the eyes. So let me just start with the beak. This is kind of where we left off, I think, last time. I saved a beak for you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my colors out. So the beak is just like the feet, only the feet, I dirtied up the colors a little bit with blue, but the beak, I used yellow, and I personally am using transparent yellow. So that's the yellow that I have on my palette. I mean, I also have equinacolon gold, but this is my true yellow. That's for me, my true yellow. And that's my favorite yellow in the whole wide world. Unlike most other artists, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be the most used to yellow, so sometimes it can be hard to get a hold of. But they are good about carrying it at Nevada Fine Arts, but they're also kind of, sometimes I think they should order a few more tubes at a time. <laughs> because they have a tendency to run out. They do. So yeah. Somebody's using it. Ended up with huh? Huh? So somebody's using it. Yes, exactly. And I, it's, I've heard more than once from my students, oh, they didn't have that, they were out. Is this similar to Nuke Ambouge? No. No. It it's look. not at all. I have this. I hate it. It's a good color, but for other things. Because they didn't have the color you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. I ended up with that. It's a good color for other things. So, um, so there's my red, and I... Um, use quinacridone red, that's what's on my palette, as my true red. Um, and then I have my French ultramarine blue, I might as well get that out here. And there's that. And can you see, you just lo even looking at my water, right? Mm -hmm. See that, what happened? First it was orange from the red and the yellow, and now it's kind of brownish, because I put the blue in. Yeah, so it's either a neutral, or it is mud, depending on if we wanted that or not. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the yellow and I'm gonna put a little bit of red in and then I'm getting kind of sort of an orangey color here. Just a little tiny bit. There we are. And I usually put a little bit of water on the ups uh, on the top of the beak. So a little bit of water on the top of the beak. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So just on the top of the beak, I put a little bit of water. I don't know if you can see that. Just on the top of the beak. And then I have this brush here loaded with that kind of orangey color. And so I start, whoops, I had too much on. I start at the bottom of the beak and put the color on. And you can see here, part of it already traveled into here because I, I hit the wet, but that's fine. So I start at the bottom, then I rinse out my brush, dab it on my towel, and then I kind of drag that color up to the top. My intent is to get the top lighter than the bottom. It's not a big difference right now. 
but a little different. So that was using red and yellow? Yes, just red and yellow. And I think here I might have used a little bit more uh, uh, yellow, but it doesn't matter. So now I rinsed out my brush and I dabbed it off really well. And I'm kind of biding my time. While I'm biding my time, I'll mix myself another little orange pile over here with a little bit more intense color and a little bit of the yellow in. Maybe a little bit more there and still more there. So it's similar color, but now I have more pigment and not quite as much water in it. Still quite wet because, you know, I don't want the beak to be dark. But in the meantime, this beak has probably, hopefully, dried a little bit and I make sure I get those extra drops off the tip of my brush on my towel. And I'm just gonna test it out. Yeah, it's already dried out a little bit. So now I put a little stripe of that darker orange on the bottom part of the beak, rinse out my brush, dab, 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 so it's just damp. And then I go in from kind of like the drier side and just barely touch my little tip of my brush into here and drag that little bit darker color out to about here, like here. There's that. Can you see now it gives it a little bit more shape? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit darker now underneath. Mm -hmm. And then I gra it gradually goes into the lighter color. Can you see that? And so one more thing we can do that we didn't have time to do on this one because it was still too wet. So I can do it on this one first while this one dries. So now I'm gonna take my little, it's a tiny little puddle, but it's also a little tiny beak. So there's no need for a huge puddle. So my little puddle of orange there, I wanna dirty it up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some, just a little bit. I'm just taking the tip of my brush into the blue. That's the, yeah, that's the dagger brush. So those are available at Nevada Fine Arts. They look a little bit different now. No, they're under $10. Uh, so let's just, a little bit goes a long way. Can you see how that already kind of browned it down, neutralized that orange so it's not, it's more like an orangey brown now, beigey color. So I have a little tiny bit of that one on. Dab, dab again, and then here, I'm gonna go in and right where that uh, division is, like between the line between the upper and lower mandible, is, I, is, I think they're called mandibles, is that it? Beak, we'll just say beak. And then I'm going in with a damp brush and just kinda um, making sure that it's not too hard of a line. Can you see how now it's more, di more division mm -hmm. between the two? And so I'm gonna do the same on the other one. Now it's dry, I'm gonna go in. Just emphasize that line there. So first I just put the line in like that. But I don't like it to be hard, that hard. I want it to be just a little bit softer. So go in from the underside and just with the tip of a damp brush, it just kinda pull it out a little bit like that. Might even pull a little bit of that color in here. So there's that, step one. And now I'm gonna go in and maybe even darken that color here a little bit more. So it's my a darker color with the blue. I just did it with a little bit more of the blue. And I'm using just this very fine tip of, on my brush or you could also use a little detail brush. But since I have this one in my hand already, that's what I'm using. And so I'll go in and do just a little bit more with that. And also on this one, a little bit more. And this time I'm gonna leave it like that. Like that. That way we have a nice beak and I'm feeling- Could you get the eyes from not getting color running? Yeah, through? well, um, I just painted around it, Same and then I put a little dot, I have a little dot of masking fluid. Oh, you put the dot of masking fluid. Inside for the white glint in the eye. And oh, if I we see. don't have that, it's not the end of the world. There's such a thing as white paint if we have to use it, or you can even just flick it out with a little knife. Um, I, I'll show you that when we get to it. Uh, so I just took a little bit of that very, very watered down kind of orangey color, and I'm just, putting a little bit at the beak up here where it hits the head. 
just because I, I want to give it a little bit more dimension. It's very, very little, and you don't have, if you don't want to fiddle around with this this much, you don't have to. I just want to show you. Can you see by just doing that? Just I'm just trying to give it a little bit more shape, and I feel that gives it a little bit more shape. So, yeah. And it's one of those things you might have to come up close to look at it. And I'm going to declare these beaks good enough. So, I saved the tail and this wing, and there's a little bit of part of his, you know, wing that's also here that I want to get really, really dark because I really want to push his beak and his face out. And so the best way of doing that, I think, is to get something really dark behind it. So I'm going to have not too, too much water. So I'm going to go with this French ultramarine blue. And uh, I think I'll go with the red. So I'm going to dip into this red. Dab, dab. And maybe a little bit more blue on the tip. Dab. And I'm here I'm just going to risk it and paint in. Whoops, too much. When it bubbles up like that, that means I have too much on. It's going to paint in like here. And that's going to bring his little face forward. Can you see that? By putting that dark next to it, all of a sudden it's much more apparent. But that's his little face. So I'm putting that behind, and then I'm just gonna go skinny here. There's that. And then his little wing kind of continues, so I'm gonna do feather around his beak, feather. Let's get some red in feather because it kind of goes up like this on the other side while you can see a little bit of his let's do a little bit of the yellow and I'm doing that same but just a little bit shorter and then here before it dries on me I like to get some out there let's do a little bit more I have three bottles of yellow eating mini mimo so here and how is this feathers going here? And a little bit here, around his foot, and then comes in a little bit on the other side. There. And then there, here's the tail feathers. They almost go together. And let's just get another color. I don't want them all the same color. Maybe some of the red here. Dab on here. And so I'm trying to be a little careful because I kind of want this guy's wing to go in front of that one. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just trying to see if I can get that to happen. A little bit more red, blue. And then I'm going to do, just so I can get a little bit of that going on. And a little bit yellow maybe. And take a tissue by the way. See, and, and you might not have that same going on because it's just because of how I placed my birds. And then a little bit more here, there. And there's that. Let me take a look at him. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So here I'm even gonna go the other way, there be a little confused there that's totally fine but can you see that so it, mm -hmm. I did it and I did it darker so that his so there's a clear distinction between this back end of his the other side of his wing so to speak and then his little body so you can kind of see what's what that's kind of nice to be able to see what's what and then I want to do the same thing that I did previously rinsed out my brush, squeezed out all the water, and then I can go in and I can lift out a little bit so that we get that extra dimension of some highlights on some of the wings while it's still damp. And then we see we, um, we get back down to those bright colors we had down there. So that can be really pretty to do that. Don't have to like that. Yeah, I think that looks fine. Um, so 
let's do, uh, we can do his tail fe feathers while we're at it. So my little detail brush, I'm gonna use that one to create that little foot here. And the foot, remember we used yellow? Little bit of yellow and some red. That way we have orange. And then we're gonna put a little bit, we can even put a little bit of the dirty blue in. And we get kind of like a foot color. I call that a foot color. Maybe a little bit redder. All right, so I can go with that. And then so his foot starts here. And I'm just gonna paint it in first. And then it goes out here. It's on dry, did you wet it? Yeah, I didn't wet it because it's such a tiny area. And so, and then there's one more toe kind of like that. It's not that easy to see the foot around mm -hmm. on this one here as it was on the other one. Mm -hmm. And here I want to just, can you see, I'm, I kind of rinse out my brush and then I kind of, I'm scrubbing a little bit because I, you don't want a really hard line across there because you know, it's going to be covered up by feathers. Mm -hmm. um, and so it wouldn't be a really hard line. So that way, you, and another good thing is that way your eye doesn't get stuck there. Anytime you have like a really hard line, it kind of stops your eye and you look there and you want an explanation for what it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, you know, it's the transition between the body and his foot, but it's not really a crucial element in the painting. It's just gotta be there. But I want your eye to kind of glide over it, not get stuck. And then they start looking too closely at my feet on the bird and I, they're not that great. So, <laughs> so, um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix myself a real dark so I'm gonna take not very much water. And so I have blue here and I have the yellow here and it even has a little bit of the red in it. It's kind of a real muddy area right here. If I put just a little bit more red in it, look at that. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of almost like a black. And that's why I would never dream of having black on my palette. It's so easy to make. Just lots of pigment and not too much um, water. And so now I'm gonna go in and just kind of First, I want to separate there a little bit. All right, so I got that very dark color on, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of his little feet here. Of course, you know, they have these very crooked nails. <laughs> there. And on this one, you can barely see it, but that's, that's fine. Now that I have this dark color on that I created from the red, blue, and yellow, Gonna maybe make it a little bit darker. So red, blue, and yellow, and not very much water. So now I have a purple. So this is a great exercise in your in knowledge of your primary color. So if it's too, if a, if your black goes too purple, what what color does it need? Yellow. Yellow, yellow. exactly. Because yellow and purple are opposite, and sure enough, did not work like a charm. Look at that. So that. That's, you know, the more you know your, the color wheel and the color theory, the easier it is for you to push your color from one side. And if it's too blue, you know, if it's too blue, what do I put in? If it's too orange, what do I put in? Stuff like that. You, you, you have a much easier time. So I already masked out the little highlight in his eye. And so now I'm just putting this black color that I created around his eye here and I'm going to let that dry and since I have two birdies I'm going to do the exact same thing on this little eye so first I kind of mix you know so birds eyes are round so they're not like ours more almond shape they're round so I put black around this other guy's eye too there and now they look kind of a little weird but that's okay. I am just uh, going to show you close up one more time how I paint in the beak and the eye. So I just make it made a little quick um, demo painting for for you um, where I have the two heads in, so you can see in more detail how I paint in the eyes and the beak because I think. Um, 
when I taped it in the class, I'm afraid it was maybe not that easy for you to see on on camera. So I uh, just want to make sure that you can completely see what I'm doing. So let's start with the beak here. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the top part of the beak. The top part of the beak is going to be the lightest, so I might also even put in a little bit of yellow in here. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the rest of it, so there's a little bit of yellow in the water. And then I mixed a reddish orange for the bottom part of the beak, and I'm going to put that in here. And then here, and then it's you know it's hitting that water and the yellow that I put in, so it's automatically gonna do a little gradation, which is perfect. So that was this part. So already you can see by having it a little darker underneath and a little lighter on top, it already starts giving its shape. And so it has to uh, dry just a tad, and while it does that. I'm going to mix a little bit of this orange, put it out here, and then I'm going to put just a tad of that French ultramarine blue in. That way it becomes a little bit of a more brownish orange, a little bit darker. And so that'll be ideal for just getting an even more shading on here. So I'm just dabbing in because it's still damp. here maybe. There, can you see that? Oops, no you couldn't see that. Here, so I'm dabbing it in here. And now I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to rinse out my brush. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this other beak. So a little bit of water on the top part. On the top, I think it's called a mandible. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. I'll put a little bit of the yellow in. Not very much, just a little bit. There. That way I can also see a little bit better where I have my water and how much it spreads. And then I'm going to dip into that orange color that I had mixed and I'm going to do the bottom part of the beak here. And now I'm going to rinse that out. Dab my brush a little bit and before it dries, I'm just going to drag that up here so that it meets the yellow that I put in. And they're going to blend a little bit. And then I can do that step with the um, little bit darker orange where I put the blue in and I'm going to put a little bit in while this is still damp and you can see it spreads by itself. Hold it up so you can see it like there and there. And now this one here is already beginning to dry. So I'm going to rinse out my brush and then I'm going to create an even darker color by putting in more blue into this orange. Still want it to read kind of brownish like this. I think this can work. And then dab, dab, and then let me push it up so you can see. And I'm going to make sure, so I'm going to flip it actually. It's a little bit easier for me to do it this way so my hand is not in your way. So I'm just very gently going in here where those upper and lower beak meets and I'm going to do a little bit of this color in here to kind of separate them there and then I'm going to rinse that color out of my brush and then with a damp brush not wet just damp before this pigment has dried I'm going to go in and just with the tip of the brush tickle it a little bit meaning just I'm just kind of encouraging to it to smudge a little bit down onto the lower part. And you can see that way we have the beak separated. And it looks pretty okay. And um, might as well do it on the other one while we're at it. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of that same color on here and follow that division of upper and lower mandibles. And then with a clean damp brush, I'm just going to fuss out this line a little bit so it looks more natural. And there you have your bird speaks. And uh, then we are going to do the eyes. So both the eyes, uh, I masked them out, meaning I've just put, put a little bit of masking fluid inside the eye so that um, that white glint in the eye can be preserved. And I mixed myself a really dark color. It's this one here. And it's just red, blue, and yellow mixed together. And that will, and not very much water, and that'll give you a really rich dark, like a black. And um, I loaded up my brush, and my brush is not very wet, and the pigment is pretty thick and dark. And then first I'm just going to start out with creating a little circle around the eye here. And then I can kind of just paint over that masking fluid. So there's that very dark eye. And I'll do the same on this one up here. Just a little circle, kind of get the outline of the eye. And then I'm just going to fill it out. And I'm going to take here, I'm going, it's not always that that's necessary, but I've got so much pigment and the pigment is so solid. I think I want to lift it out a little bit, just so it's not so dark. I can always add the dark again. But I like to be able to do the outside rim a little bit darker than what's on the inside of the eye. So that has to dry, but in the meantime, what I can do is, I can take a little bit of that color and then here I'm going to do a little half circle around the eye where there's a little bit there's a little bit of light in between this circle I make it's not a circle half circle you don't want to do it all the way around it's going to look too much but a half circle like that and then I'm going to rinse out my brush and then before it dries on me, hopefully, before it dries on me, I'm going to go in from the outside here and do exactly like I did with the beak and try to smudge this line a little bit so it's not so visible. But it's still there, there's a hint of it. It just gives the eyes a little bit more dimension. So hopefully you can see that. And here, because I didn't paint all the way out. There's a little white rim around the outside of the eye here. And I really like it. It's kind of one of those happy accidents. So I'm certainly going to leave it, but I'm going to do the same thing. Take a little tiny bit of this dark on the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to create a little half circle. I'm going to have to switch around like there so my hand's not in your way. And do that little half circle here. Like that. Rinse out my brush, dab it on my towel, and then just smudge it a little bit from the outside. There. Okay, that one turned out even better, I think. That's a good eye. Um, so let's see. They have to be dry before we can pick up the masking fluid. But I think we can do it. Actually, before I do that, can you see this eye here? It's a little bit lighter on this side, you know, when I dabbed it out. And what I'm thinking before I remove the masking fluid, I'll try and go in with a little bit of that dark color on the tip of my brush. And then I'll try and find that outside edge 
of this eye, just make that outside a little bit darker. There. Again, these, you don't have to fiddle around with it like that, but I just have fun doing this. And I'll do a little bit here too, where this part is just a little bit darker. It's just going to make the eye look more round. Okay, so our eyes are bone dry and we can now rub off the masking fluid that I put on in the middle for that white glint in the eyes. I don't know where that water came from. Oh, I have a drop on there. So let's just see. And then here, reveal. There we have it. So I just want to rub off here. There. And um, now all I need to do is go in with a tiny little brush. Let's find a tiny little brush. So I'm just going to go with a little tiny one like this. Of course you can see the masking fluid. These white glints, they're too big. That's not what I want. I want it a little bit smaller than that. Um, so I'm going to go into that same dark color that I had already prepared from the three primary colors, red, blue and yellow. And I'm going to load up my little brush here and make sure I roll it in the pigment so it has a nice tip. And then let's go in here. And make this one a little bit smaller. There's that. And then the same down here. I think we have two nice birdies. This one needs a little fixing. There. There. I like it. I think that's those are some nice eyes for these fantasy birds. So and then um, you know we'll finish off these birds in the classroom. Not these, but the ones we've been working on. So now you can see exactly how I did all that. And here I was just taking care of it all. White sparkle in the wrong spot. And um, you know, if you don't have uh, a white glint left and uh, you missed it, you can always use um, a little white gel pen or a little, little bit of white paint and add it on. That's totally fine. And you can even take a Sharpie or an X-Acto knife and then just kind of flick out you know, when you're all done, flick out a little bit of white, so just kind of scrape it out. Um, that also works. Here you can see the finished painting uh, with the splattered on background. Have a lot of fun with this one.